Hi, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory at UAB, and this is my top 10 resolutions for 2017 in the laboratory. We have a very large lab now. We have 22 people, and that means we're going to be able to get a lot of stuff done this year, and I want to share some of those priorities with you. This is by no means everything that we're doing. This is a subset of our projects. These are things that are starting right now and we plan on completely finishing them this year, which is pretty fast for scientific research and get those results out to you as soon as possible. If you want more information about this, I'm not going to go into much detail in this video, but we'll do other videos so you can see more about what these studies are about. And if you see something and you think you may be a uh, potential participant for it, I'll put some information in the description below where you can find the link to go to the online screener so we can see if you're eligible. So let's jump right into it and go with the top resolution, number one, which is low-dose naltrexone for ME-CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome. So this is a study I've been asked to do for a very long time. We've done a video on it previously, so you can look at that about a month ago. And the question here is, does low-dose naltrexone work as well for ME-CFS as it does for fibromyalgia. We've done two studies. It seems to work quite well for fibromyalgia, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for chronic fatigue syndrome. Some people say it works pretty well. Some people say it doesn't work for them at all. We need to do a study and find out how many people respond to it. So this will be the first clinical trial. We're recruiting for it right now, and we will finish it this year and get those results out so they can see if this is something that will be helpful for them. Second resolution, number two, is dextromethorphan for fibromyalgia. So the idea here, this is a clinical trial. This is another medication we're testing. And we want to test low-dose dextromethorphan. This is a drug that it's in a different class than low-dose naltrexone, but at a low dose, it hits some of the same targets as low-dose naltrexone. And the reason we want to test this is because some people don't respond to LDN if they have fibromyalgia. It just doesn't work for them. And also some people can't take or don't want to take LDN because they're taking an opioid painkiller and they're afraid that the drugs may conflict. That's not an issue with dextromethorphan. So basically, we think that dextromethorphan at low dosages, about 30 milligrams a day, may help people with fibromyalgia, and this will just add another tool that people can use and physicians can use to treat fibromyalgia, and maybe down the road, chronic fatigue syndrome as well. So the third resolution is endotoxin for fibromyalgia. This is not a treatment study. This is something totally different. This is us trying to find out definitively what is wrong when people have fibromyalgia. So the idea is when you inject endotoxin, it triggers the immune system. It basically tricks the immune system into thinking that there's an infection for just a few hours. Our hypothesis is that people with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome have a hypersensitive immune system. So it takes a very little trigger to set them off. So we're going to test that with this injection. We're going to give it to healthy individuals and individuals with fibromyalgia. Um, it's a low enough dosage where it should not make them feel very sick, but their immune system should still respond. And we'll take blood draws to see how it's responding. We have particular things we look at. If our hypothesis is confirmed and we find that the people with fibromyalgia have a uh, abnormally robust immune response to endotoxin, that'll give us some incredibly important information about what to target in order to effectively treat and hopefully ultimately cure fibromyalgia. So a very, very important study. Number four, very novel, never been done in humans before. So we're very excited about this study. That is peripheral immune cell tracking in ME-CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. The idea here is we think perhaps especially in severe cases of CFS, peripheral immune cells, these are T cells and B cells and a few other cells, can break through the blood-brain barrier, get into the brain, and cause inflammation, to cause pain sensitivity and to cause profound fatigue and a lot of other problems. Peripheral immune cells are not supposed to be in the brain. So if they're found in the brain, that's a very good clue of what's wrong in those individuals. So we're going to be the first to do this. We're going to do a positron emission tomography study where we draw the blood. We're going to pull out those immune cells. We're going to put a tracer on them, put them back in, wait three days, and then scan the brain to see if any of those cells 
made it up to the brain. Uh, the natural, the person's natural immune cells are T cells, B cells, um, nothing that we're injecting them with. If we find those cells in the brain, then we know there's something very wrong with either the blood brain barrier, it's broken down, or for some reason those immune cells are pushing through when they're not supposed to. And that would give us incredible information for how to develop more effective treatments for these disorders. So the next four are all about brain temperature. And it may seem like cheating that I'm going to take up four with brain temperature, but these are all different studies. They're all in completely different populations, and they're all funded from different sources. So I'm counting them as four because we're going to get them all done this year. Uh, again, the idea with brain temperature is this is a very simple scan that shows how hot uh, the brain is. Uh, just like we measure temperature in the body to see if you have a fever, we think we can measure brain temperature to see if you have neuroinflammation in the brain. So the first one is brain temperature and chronic fatigue syndrome. This is funded by Solve MECFS and the Ramsey Award, which we, we just received that award. You can see the do you have a hot brain video for more information about this. So our hypothesis is that if you have MECFS, you will have elevated brain temperature, which indicates neuroinflammation. So we're going to do that study this year. Uh, number six is brain temperature and traumatic brain injury. And same similar idea. If you get hit in the head really hard, it causes damage. That'll cause subsequent neuroinflammation. And we think we can pick that up with brain temperature. So if someone has a traumatic brain injury from an auto accident and they're having mood disorders or cognitive disorders or pain fatigue, this may be a good scan that can show us the neuroinflammation. Number seven is brain temperature and rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, there's a lot of drugs for rheumatoid arthritis. That's, you know, a lot of pain and inflammation in the joints. But a lot of times, even if the person's joints respond to the drugs, they still feel profoundly fatigued. Almost 80% of people with RA feel very, very fatigued. We think that means the inflammation has gotten through into the brain. And so we're going to use the scan to see if the RA individuals have elevated brain temperature, which would tell us that there's neuroinflammation. If we find that, that means that in addition to treating the joints, we may need to give another drug that can get into the brain and calm down the brain inflammation. Uh, and the eighth one is brain temperature in pediatric chronic pain, especially autoimmune disorders. So there's not a lot of... Um, research done on pediatric pain. And a lot of the children with these autoimmune kind of arthritis conditions are also profoundly fatigued. And we think the same thing may be happening in them. Since this is such a simple and short scan, this brain temperature scan, we want to bring some children in who have uh, autoimmune disorders, um, rheumatic type disorders, and then see if they have elevated brain temperature to give us a better idea of how we can uh, treat them. So resolution number nine, totally different uh, topic here, is to submit a MECFS center grant. You might have heard about these. The NIH has announced at some point they're going to release a call for center grants, and this will allow all the individuals working on MECFS to work together in a more effective way and give us some um, resources to do more studies. So we're really looking forward to this. I hope this comes through very soon. There's some budget issues with the government, so it may be delayed. We're crossing our fingers and hoping this comes out. As soon as it comes out, the groups will be working together and we'll try to form these true chronic fatigue syndrome centers to really catalyze the research and get some serious results fast. That's the whole idea. So we're really glad this is happening and uh, we can't wait till we can uh, put in our application and, and see these centers start to form. And that's going to happen this year. Uh, number 10, uh, my 10th resolution is just to release more videos. I've uh, The truth is we could do a video every day and we would not run out of stuff to talk about. There's so much stuff we're doing and there's so many things that other people are doing. There's so much to talk about. So I wish I could do the videos more frequently, but we spend almost all of our time doing the research and, and writing grants. So that takes up a lot of my time. But I do want to do videos at minimum once every other week, which is a lot more frequent than I did it last year. So that's my resolution, uh, my 10th resolution. I'm putting it out there, so now maybe I'll be held to it, to do a video update on the lab at least 
once every other week in 2017 and, and keep everyone up to date. So those are my 10 uh, resolutions for 2017. Stay tuned for more information. Again, you can click that link uh, below this video if you're interested in doing the screener and just indicate somewhere on that screener if there's a particular project that you're interested in so we can get you directed to the right group. So we have a lot to do. There are a lot of other projects we're doing and I'm really excited for the new year. I'm excited for this new group. Really excited to get started. And um, as always, we'll get this information to you as soon as we possibly can. We want to go really fast. And all the work we do is funded directly or indirectly by the people of the United States. So, you know, it's your information as much as mine. And we will get it out to you as soon as we can. So thank you.